Miss Simpson. Have a very good afternoon. Sneaking off, are you, Emily? I wouldn't call it sneaking, Lucy. Anyway, who's talking? Mm. You've been out all day. I'm not going to tell you where. You didn't find it? No. Nope. You'll be buying me tea this year, my dear. <laughs> you wait and see. Chance would be a fine thing. I'm so sorry. You see, I didn't know who to call. Yes. You've been most helpful. Thank you. number in Brighton, please.
This is it here, sir. Really, Troy? I'd never have guessed. Morning, Tom. Haven't seen you in a while. We only meet when there's a corpse. How'd she die? That's easy, broken neck. But the question is, did she fall? <laughs> or was she pushed? Yes, I noticed that too. Scuff marks on the carpet. Well, she might not have fallen at all. Blows to the back of the neck and then dragged over here, make it look like an accident. But it doesn't make sense. Okay, I'll get the I have to call out another ambulance later. I mean, who'd want to bump off an eight-year-old spinster? Not even rich. She used to be a teacher. Who called us in? The old girl who lives opposite. She thinks it's murder. Well, of course it was murder. I saw Emily come home about six o'clock and I knew something was wrong. How exactly did you know, Miss Billeringer? Well, she slammed the door for a start. Now, some people close doors and some people slam them. Emily was very much a closer. Well, is that it? And she didn't padlock her tricycle. Now, Emily was very particular about this. She was afraid of thieves. We all are these days. But it's no reflection on you, Chief Inspector, but to leave her tricycle like that, she must have been very upset. Do you have any idea what might have upset her? No, I told you. The last time I spoke to her, she was about to go into the wood. Looking for this flower? The spurred coral root. And it's an orchid, not a flower. It's been seven years since we saw one, and I found it that time, so Emily had to give me tea at the Regency Hotel. That was, it was our little competition. Well, maybe she couldn't find it. Maybe that's what upset her. I hardly think so. Would Miss Simpson have picked the orchid if she'd found it? Oh, no. She'd have marked the position and photographed it. We have pointers. Red ribbons for her and yellow for me. Mm, very nice. There was a camera on Miss Simpson's table. We'll check if there's a film inside. Right. Well, thank you, Miss Bellringer. Oh, you will look into this, Chief Inspector, because I know something is wrong. We'll look into it, Miss Bellringer. Well, I shall have to go over tomorrow. I still haven't told the bees. I'm sorry? Well, you have to tell the bees when somebody dies. Otherwise, they just clear off. You're off a rocker, if you ask me. You didn't believe her? Well, what you got to go on? A slam door and a trike that wasn't padlocked. It's a waste of time. Are uh, you Mr. Barnaby? <laughs> Detective Chief Inspector Barnaby, yes. Who are you? My name is Dennis. Dennis Rainbird. My card. Oh, you're an undertaker. Yes. I am based in Causton, but as it happens, I live here in Badger's Drift, and I thought I ought to pop by. Miss Simpson was a client. I'm sorry? She prepaid. Our satin service is one of our complete funeral packages. Very upmarket, although, between you and me, I let her have it at a discount. <laughs> she taught my mum, you know. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Rainbird? I was wondering if I could take her, the deceased. Oh, I'm afraid that won't be possible for a little while. Oh, so you do suspect some naughtiness. It was her neck, I understand. Who told you that? Oh, come on, everyone knows by now. It's that sort of village. Well, you can't have the body yet, all right? Sir? Oh. I see you've got a right constable there. You let me know when you're ready for me. See the car? Yes. You wouldn't have thought they were so well paid, would you? Undertakers. Check out that camera and the telephones. Find out what calls Miss Simpson made after six o'clock. So you're taking it seriously then, sir? No, Troy. Actually, I'm just filling in time till tea. Right. Oh, uh, camera and telephone, right. Uh, what about you? I must find the doctor. Something wrong, sir? Emily Simpson's doctor, Troy. 
Maybe she did suffer from dizzy spells. Maybe she did just fall. Either way, I want to know. No. Well, she never complained to me. She was remarkably fit for her age. When did you last see her, Dr. Lester? A couple of days ago. Well, I, I don't know. I, I liked to drop in at the end of my rounds. You know, you know glass of sherry and all that. You didn't talk to her at all in the last 24 hours? No. I was away in Corston all day yesterday. Local hospital. No, you weren't, Daddy. That was Tuesday. What? You go to Corston on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm just trying to be helpful. <laughs> yes. You're right. Uh, thank you, Judith. Of course, I was in all day yesterday. I was watching the cricket, a test match. You're not treating this as murder, are you, Inspector? We're not ruling anything out, Mrs. Lesseter. Well, I was in Corston all day yesterday, shopping. I like shopping. Ask Pookie. No need to follow my wife, Inspector. Just follow her credit card slips. God. Judy. I don't know what's the matter with her at the moment. It's that boy she's seeing. Yes. He's an artist, local chap. I can call her back if you like. No, that's all right. I take it Judy is your stepdaughter, Mrs. Lesseter. Yes. And Trevor's second wife. You know, I really don't know how we can help you, Inspector. Do you know anyone who might have had a grudge against Miss Simpson? Any reason to cause her harm? No. I mean, no one would want to hurt her. She didn't have an enemy in the world. Is that the big bad policeman? Yeah, Inspector Barnaby. He doesn't have a blue light on his car. I wish he hadn't come. Hold it. Just like that. Michael? I love that look. Right now. It's the eyes. Really? Yes. Sad and soft. Just a little bit of fear. I wish you wouldn't embarrass me like that. Really? How do you like to be embarrassed then, Pookie? What were you buying in Corston? Oh, just some clothes. I'm surprised there are any clothes left to buy. Don't start, Trevor. You have an allowance, Barbara, a generous one. If you overspend again... You'll do what, Pookie? Hello? Yes, this is Barbara Lesseter. Who is this? What do you want? I think we both know what I want, my dear. The only question you should be asking is... How much? Five hundred pounds, Mrs. Lesseter. That's what it'll cost to keep me quiet. Otherwise... I've got a story to tell, haven't I? Who was it? No one. What was oh, Go away, Pookie. Go away and leave me alone. That's right, Troy. Dinner's ready, Tom. Yes, Troy, thank you. That's exactly what I want to know. Thank you. What's this, then? It's Delia Smith. Stewed neck of lamb with mushroom dumplings. You can't go wrong with Delia Smith. Yeah, that's what I've always thought. Was that Sergeant Troy just now? Yes. No, I'd like to meet him one day. No, you wouldn't. How's the new investigation going? I think it is murder, Joyce. Don't just think it. I feel it. She was very old, wasn't she, Emily Simpson? How did she die? Someone broke her. Someone broke her neck. You know, Cully's coming tomorrow. She's going to want to see a bit of you. Yeah. 
just I know how you are when you get started on a case. Yes. I have to go out this evening, I'm afraid. Oh, Tom. Emily Simpson made two telephone calls before she died. That's what Troy was telling me just now. One was to direct her inquiries. She wanted a number in Brighton, but she never got round to saying what it was. What about the other one? Well, that's the odd thing. She made a phone call to the local helpline. I understand that. I completely understand that. I know how you She could still come back to you, Brian. I mean, I think that's what you're saying. There's still hope. I'm still here, Steve. You take your time. Take sugar for you, Terry. I'm right here. I've got to talk to someone. I don't know what to do. And that was how she started. Something like that. Go on. And then she said she'd seen something. She said she had to tell someone about it. She said it was unbelievable. Did she say what it was? No. Didn't you press her? We're not meant to. Anyway, then she said she was going to call someone else. That she knew who to call. And then she thanked me and rang off. And there was nothing more? I'm sorry, Inspector. I know there was something else, but I can't think. Well, if it does come to you, you can give us a ring. Yes, of course. Well, thank you, Miss Baisley. Terry, we only use Christian names here. Tom. Yes, please. Two bacon. Scrambled eggs. Morning, sir. Don't you get a cooked breakfast at home, sir? No, Troy, I do not. I got that medical report from Dr. Bullard, sir. Did it? Struck with a heavy object as yet unidentified at the base of the neck. Looks like Emily Simpson was murdered after all. I'm amazed, Troy. Oh, and I got those photographs that you wanted developed. The ones from her camera? Looks like she found that flower. Be somewhere around here. Can I see the photograph again? <sighs> this must be the first police search organised for a flower. It's an orchid. Sir! Oh, there! There's Emily's marker. That's the orchid. Bird coral root. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, poor Emily. Well, she wasn't killed because she found an orchid. No, Troy. But she found something, and it upset her enough. flattened, brambles broken. What, you think someone's been having it away? Is that what Emily Simpson saw? Two people bonking? Oh, sorry. Troy, you've got a pair of tweezers or something. Swiss Army knife, sir. Okay. What is it? A piece of black fibre. Off the clothes? No, I don't think so. That's a blanket or a rug, something like that. Well, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Right. 
I want the whole place gone over. Yes, sir. Right. I want this whole area gone over. Do you really think that's what it came down to, sir? Because you saw two people at it. Looks like it, Troy. Why would they want to kill her? Unless it was adultery. I suppose it could have been arse bandits. What? But in the wood. You mean homosexuals, Troy? Well, that's what I said. You are as politically correct as a Nuremberg rally. Whose house do you think this could be, then? Why? It's got a room with a view. Mr. Barnaby, Iris Rainbird. Do come in. Oh, and you too, dear. Just in time for tea. <laughs> See you next week, Mrs. Rainbird. <laughs> oh, thank you, Anna. Thank you, dear. <laughs> My cleaner, dishonest, and she drinks, but good domestic help is impossible round here. Uh, do come in, come in. taught me at school, you know. Yes, your son told me. Oh, that's right. Dennis said he'd met you. Seems to me, Mrs. Rainbird, you must see a lot from your uh, eerie. My hide. Yes, I'm a keen observer of wildlife. Birds. I thought I saw a pair of binoculars. Yes. You'd be amazed how many species I can pick up. Yes, Danny, you good boy. Here's the tea. Do help yourself, Chief Inspector. The clubs are anchovy, salmon spread in the hearts, marmite spades, and potted meat diamonds. I'll just have the cup of tea, thank you. Yeah, and me, thanks. Now, I expect you want to know if I saw anyone around at the time of Miss Simpson's death. That was in my mind, Mrs. Rainbird. Did you? It must have been about... Uh, between seven and eight yesterday evening. And yes, Mr. Barnaby, there was someone. Catherine Lacey. Mm. She lives in Holly Cottage. That's just the other side of the village to Miss Simpson's place. She lives with her brother, uh, Michael Lacey. He calls himself an artist. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you'll find her there. Oh, no, no, no. If you want to talk to her, try Ty House. Ty House? She's getting married next week. Done very nicely for herself. Dennis? Oh, come on, Mummy. It's the talk of the whole village ever since the shooting. <gasps> Poor Bella. I'm surprised you people didn't investigate it more. Bella Trace dying like that. Yes, but they did say it was just an accident, dear. I suppose it's just an accident that two years later our Catherine is marrying the widower. Henry Trace, such a gentleman. Years older than her and stinking rich. Where exactly was Catherine Lacey heading when you saw her, Mrs. Rambert? Oh, well, I don't really know. I mean, she had one of her dogs with her and she was carrying an envelope, so I suppose she was going to the post office. But then the phone rang and when I got back, she'd gone. Iced sombrero, constable? No, thank you. And I'm a sergeant. And Catherine Lacey was the only person you saw yesterday evening. Is that right? Yes. You know, Mrs. Rainbird, I'd have said that eight o'clock was a bit late for your hobby. I mean, what are you likely to see flying at that time? Owls. Oh, those two give me the creeps. Oh. A gay undertaker. You don't suppose it was him in the wood, do you? <laughs> I somehow doubt it, Troy. So what about Catherine Lacey and Ty House? Not today. Well, they certainly had it in for her. That's right, Troy. But I'm going home to see my daughter. Catherine Lacey can wait. Hello, you. 
What happened to the green hair? That was last term, Dad. And the tattoo? It washed off. Good to see you, Kelly. How long are you staying there? Oh, the whole week, if that's OK. Have you told him? She's got the lead part in a play. John Ford. It's a pity she's a whore. I've come home to learn my lines. I thought you were studying art history. Oh, it's just for fun. I don't know, I might switch, though. I like drama. Would you go through my lines with me? I doubt you'll have time, dear. Not much meat on this chicken, is it? It's not a chicken. It's a quail. How's the case going, Dad? Is it murder? Certainly hard work. I'll get in. Hello. Hello, Inspector Barnaby. This is Terry Paisley at the helpline. Oh, yes. I've just remembered what that old lady said to me, the one who died, and I thought I ought to give you a ring. Oh, yes, well, please, go on, uh, Miss Paisley. Terry. Well, it doesn't make much sense, but she said, just like poor Annabella. That's what she said. Annabella. You sure she didn't just say Bella? Might have been, but I don't think so. Just like poor Annabella. And then she hung up. Well, thank you very much for calling me, uh, Terry. Thank you very much. Come on, Mummy, it's the talk of the whole village ever since the shooting. <gasps> poor Bella. I'm surprised you people didn't investigate it more. Bella Trace dying like that. That? Oh, that was the helpline. Aren't you supposed to call them? <laughs> well, things aren't quite as bad as that. Except that I might have two murders now instead of just one. What, a broken neck? And a shooting. All in a day's work? I'm glad you've come home, Gully. Will you read my lines with me? I'll try. Dad, I bought you a present from Cambridge. What is it? It's chicken and ham. Don't tell me you've got it! And, uh... <laughs> oh, the rug! Oh, oh, you clever, clever boy! Where did you find it? In the pond behind the quarry. I saw them throw it in tied round some stones. Yes. How much do you think it's worth? Think what the police will make of it if their forensic people get hold of it. <laughs> They'd have a field day. Oh, 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 this is the big one, Denny. This is going to make us very, very rich. <laughs> oh, 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 who's a good boy, <laughs> Who's a good boy? <laughs> 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 Not a lot here, Troy. It's all I could find, sir. Bella Trey shot in a hunting accident. Two columns in the local rag and a coroner's report. Accidental death. Jake! <laughs> Troy! Bella. I wonder what that's short for. This is Thai House here, sir. How the other half live, eh? Rather less than half, I'd say, Troy. Who are you? What do you want? I'm Detective Inspector Barnaby. And this is Detective Sergeant Troy. Who are you? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm David Whiteley, Henry's estate manager. Mr. Trace. I suppose you hear about that school teacher. Emily Simpson. You knew her? Uh, no, never met her. I don't suppose you were in the village at any time between six and eight on Wednesday? Uh, no. No, don't remember where I was. Out in the fields. Is Mr. Trace at home? Uh, yes, but it's not a particularly good time. He's getting married next week. Well, we won't take up too much of his time, sir. So. He's in the drawing room. Yeah. 
Bella? I don't understand. I thought you were here about the teacher, Miss Simpson. We are, sir, but just before she died, Miss Simpson may have referred to your late wife in a phone call she made. She mentioned Bella? She referred to her as poor Annabella. <laughs> You've got the wrong Bella. Nobody ever called her that. Had she been taught by Miss Simpson, sir? Yes, as a matter of fact, she had, but she was just Bella. If it's not too uh, painful, sir, I'd be interested to know how your wife died. It is painful, and I don't see how it's relevant. Miss Simpson could have known your wife as Annabella. Is a nickname, pet name, something like that. If there is a connection... There is no connection. We need to be sure. Well, if you insist, it was two years ago, the start of the season. There weren't many of us out there. Myself, Bella, David Whiteley, my manager. And Bella's sister, had also come along, Phyllis, Phyllis Cadell. She didn't show that often. Always wondered why she chose that day of all days. Anyway, Dr. Lesser was there. Uh, known him for years. Had a couple of friends down from London. Then there was Michael Lacey, young friend of mine. He comes a beater, you know, to scare the birds. I suppose it's always easy to talk about these things with hindsight, but I've often felt we were really fated that day. Bella tripped on a root and twisted her ankle rather badly. I suggested she go home, but she said it was too far. We were on the other side of the village. Maybe if I'd been more forceful, she'd be with us now. It happened, oh, ten minutes later. Michael was standing right next to her. Oh. He ran all the way back to Thai House, but by the time the ambulance arrived, it was all over. Any one of us could have fired that shot. Phyllis, Lassiter, myself. It was an accident, a horrible, bloody... Accident, and you've no right to drag poor Bella's ghost back from the past. Henry? Oh, it's all right, Catherine. This is Chief Inspector um, Barnaby. Of course. You're here to ask about poor Miss Simpson. I understand, Miss Lacey, that you don't live here. Not at the moment, no. I will do so, of course, after next Saturday. We are to be married then, Inspector. I live at Holly Cottage. It's on the edge of the woods. I share it with my brother, Michael. And where were you on Wednesday evening? On Wednesday? The night Miss Simpson was killed. Well, I was here. Well, don't ask me. I was sleeping all evening. You didn't leave the house? No. We've had reports that you were seen in the village, Miss Lacey. That's not true. Oh, wait, I did go out. I went into the village to post a letter. I took Benji with me. It's oh, a nice dog. Oh, Benji! He's not very good with strangers. Are you treating everyone as suspects in this business? It's important for me to know where everyone was on Wednesday evening. Was there anyone else in the house? Well, only Phyllis, my sister-in-law. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Henry, they're having trouble with the generator. They want to move it closer to the marquee. Well, I've ruined the speeches. No way. I'll talk to them. No, no, I'll go. You've finished, I take it. I'd like to talk to Phyllis Cadell, please, sir. You can talk to whom you like. I'll take you up. We're all under a lot of pressure at the moment. How did you meet Henry Trace, Miss Lacey? He looked after Michael and me after our parents died. He was a sort of guardian. 
To be honest, I don't know what we'd have done without him. This is her room. Lighthouse, 14 miles off Plymouth in the English Channel. Ediston. Ediston, certainly. Phyllis? Sorry to disturb you, it's the police. The police? Right! Oh! Are you all right? Yes, yes, of course. Um, mm. They want to ask you about Emily Simpson. Oh, oh please. Oh, Emily Simpson, yes. Why didn't I think of that? Thank you very much, Miss Lacey. I won't take up any more of your time. Oh, I suppose you must think I was quite startled just now. Ah, well, you see, the thing is, I thought you'd come about my car tax. It's been on my conscience now for weeks, and what with the wedding and everything, I... Must be a busy time for you, Miss Cadell. Well, yes, it is. Well, I've looked after the house for seven years now, Mr... Uh, Barnaby, and this is Sergeant Troy. Seven years, yes. I came with my sister, Bella. And now this... Well, I never thought Henry would um, marry again, but I do what I can, even if I'm quite worn out. You were uh, planning to stay on living here after the wedding, Miss Cadell? No, no. No, a house cannot hold two mistresses. Henry has a cottage on the estate and I'm being pensioned off there. I I'm quite looking forward to it. And I'm sure Henry will be much happier without me. Uh, you want to ask uh, about Emily Simpson? Yes. Well, I'm afraid I can't help you there, not at all. I didn't leave the house that day and I didn't see anything. Well, I've been so busy, you see, what with the uh, wedding. Everything. Oh, pathetic. Phyllis Goodell. That story about the car tax, she was scared shitless. Oh, you do have a way with words, don't you try? What are we investigating, sir? Emily Simpson or Bella Trace? Two unnatural deaths in the same small area involving the same circle of people. What do you think, Troy? We're investigating both. Yes. Can I help you? Yes. I'm Inspector Barnaby, and this is Sergeant Troy. Oh. We're police officers. Oh, nice. You didn't answer the door? No, no, I didn't. I, uh, I was painting. You better come through to the kitchen. No, no, that's my studio. I don't like people going in there. This way. Yes, I'm sorry about Miss Simpson. I liked her. There's no point asking me about it. I don't have anything to do with the village. And the village doesn't have much to do with me. Could you tell me where you were last Wednesday, Mr Lacey? No. I don't know. I was probably here. I am most days. Not much of a life. My work is my life. You wouldn't understand that. I might have gone for a walk or something, I don't remember. I do have a couple of other questions, if you don't mind, Mr Lacey. I do mind, but go on. I understand that you were present when the late Mrs Trace was killed. Bella? Hmm. Yes, yes I was. But you don't think there's any connection, do you? You were actually with her when she was shot. Yes, yes I was. But I didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't even have a gun. You went for help? Yes, I ran hell for leather back to Thai House. Catherine was there, my sister. Bella's been shot. We have to call an ambulance. But by the time it got there, it was too late. She died before it arrived. 
And now your sister is going to marry Henry Trace. Yes. How do you feel about that, Michael? Tie house. 5,000 acres. Tons of money in the bank. I'll say one thing for Catherine. She certainly doesn't come cheap. not human as was I who have not been but human no. who had not been but human as was I would have kneeled to him and begged for love you why you are not worthy once to name his name without true worship or indeed unless you kneel to have another name him what was he called we are not come to that let it suffice that you shall have the glory to father what so brave a father got Hi, Dad. I didn't hear you come in. That sounded good. Is it coming on? I think she's wonderful. We're going to have to go up and see her. If I ever manage to learn it all. How's the case going? Oh, I don't know. Why do I get the feeling that everyone is lying to me? Everyone. They always lie to you, Tom. And you always know. That's why you're so good at your job. Oh, I'd better get dinner. Um, Mum, I thought maybe we could go out tonight. No, no. I've got a nice pot of fur in the deep freeze. You read Cully's lines with her, Tom. It'll take your mind off things. <sighs> You'll get there, Dad. You always do. Do you want a drink? No, thanks. No, thanks. White. Lilies, you forgot the white lilies. This is the satin service. What's this? It's a letter, Pookie. We get them every morning. You've withdrawn £500 from our joint reserve account. Oh, yes. Might have. Might have? £500? We're not exactly overdrawn, Trevor. Well, what's it for? It's a surprise for our anniversary. We've never celebrated our anniversary. By the time we got to the first one, we knew there was nothing to celebrate. Well, this one's going to be different. You're not going to the funeral dress like that, are you, Judith? Michael says bright colours suit me. Anyway, I hate black. Where are you going? I thought I'd leave you two to bicker in private. You can go in the front if you like, Chris. No, no, I know my good. Redeemer liveth, and he shall stand upon the last upon the earth, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. Which one of them, John? Sir? Which one of them? Mrs. Rainbow, no more a bird watcher than I am. So what have you been using those binoculars for? That son of hers, this. Person. 
personalized Porsche. Where did he get the money to pay for that? Dr. Lesseter tells me he spent Wednesday afternoon watching the test match. There was no test match. Rain stopped play. And his wife's just as bad. She was shopping in Corston all day on Wednesday. It's early closing. Catherine Lacey tells us she never left the house on Wednesday afternoon, except that she was seen. So suddenly it's another story. She went to post a letter. Then there's the question of Bella Trace and the shooting accident. You don't think it was an accident? Henry Trace's story, what he told us. There's something wrong. Something doesn't add up. You think he was lying? I don't know. Maybe he was. Maybe he was simply mistaken in his account, but he wasn't telling us the truth. Michael Lacey. Why did he run all that way back to Thai House to call the ambulance when the accident happened on the other side of the village? Why didn't he call the ambulance from there? And why, that day of all days, did Phyllis Cadell decide to shoot? Which one of them, Troy? Which one? It seems they're all bloody liars. One of them is something more. For as much as it's pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear sister here departed, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Amen. Well, you still haven't caught him. Oh, it's early days yet, Miss Bell. <laughs> Not for poor Emily. Come and have a Chief Inspector. I feel the need of a drink. I'm afraid funerals do that for me. Yes, of course I remember the day Bella died. It was terrible. No, thank you. Henry Trace was already in a wheelchair. Yes, polio. Bella never coped with it very well. You know, when she died, I always thought he'd marry Phyllis. Oh, the sister-in-law. Mm. She adored him. Still does, for all I know. What can you tell me about Catherine Lacey? Oh, she's Henry's ward. She and Michael, her brother, and when their parents died in, in a car crash, Henry sort of adopted them and set them up in a gamekeeper's cottage on the estate. Holly Cottage? Uh, yes. Well, they were very young then, barely into their teens. Oh, and there was a nanny. Mary Sharp, that was her name, Nanny Sharp. Well, she was meant to look after them, but she had a terrible time. In what way? Well, I understand the children were always fighting, endless rows. In the end, Mary Upton left, and now she's retired down on the coast. Emily could have told you more. She knew Mary quite well. Oh, more sherry? Uh, no, I'm fine, thank you very much. If you ask me, Catherine's the one to look out for. Meaning? Well... That girl is far too beautiful for other people's good, and if she was found bonking in the wood, she has the most to lose. She's got a point. You did say Catherine was seen in the village? Yes, she was seen walking a dog. Oh, well, there was no dog here that night. Wellington goes crazy if a dog comes anywhere near. She could have tied it up somewhere and come here alone. <laughs> Not that dog. She sometimes ties it up outside the post office. It barks its head off. You'd have heard it a mile away. Yeah. Do you know, for a minute, I thought I had the whole thing solved. I think it all went terribly well, Dennis. Beautiful service. You know, I think I deserve another Maron Lyonnais. <laughs> If that's Mrs. Quine, she's early. I'll go. Okay. <laughs>
Oh, it's you. Oh, who is it, Dennis? <laughs> Dennis? Did you see the mother? Head almost clean off. Never seen such ferocity. Murder weapon? Knife, ten inches long. And heavy. They must have taken it with them. I want the clothes bagged and done a forensic. Yes, sir. What a mess. Who found them? A Mrs. Quine, cleaning lady. She's been treated for shock outside. No surprise. I suppose I'd better talk to her. You don't expect to get much sense. Sir, you better come and take a look at this. You're not going to believe it? On the contrary, Troy, I rather think I will. What was it you said, sir, about bird watching? Listen to this. At 10.30 a.m., Mr. and Mrs. W. crossed over by post box to avoid Miss G. 11.14 a.m., A. called on Mrs. S. Stayed 15 minutes. There must be a couple of hundred entries in this file alone. I mean, thousands of them over the years. I'll take them all down, Troy. We're going to have to go through a lot of them. They didn't miss anything. Including the murder of Emily Simpson. And maybe of Bella Trace, too. Blackmail, sir. You think that was a rainbow's game? Oof. Look, well, Troy. Last page has been torn out. Looks like they made one entry too many. She wasn't a bad old stick. She was a bit peculiar. There and her son. Him being an undertaker and all. But she was very good to me. In her own way, she was really good. What time did you come to the house? About four o'clock. Tuesday mornings and Friday afternoons. Those were my hours. And you didn't see anyone near the house, coming or going? Well, well I did. I told one of your men about it. She was standing at the front door as I came, holding the basket. She'd been pressing the doorbell, but... But she'd gone when I arrived. Did you recognise this woman? Well, it was Catherine Lacey. You know, one who's getting wet. Tie house, sir? No, let's try Holly Cottage. And that's a bend just ahead, Troy. I've seen it, sir. <laughs> And do me a favour, Troy, when we get there, if we get there, park at the bottom of the lane. Yeah, well. Yeah, isn't it? He's not fine. How can you be so unfair? You know, sometimes you really make me sick. I don't. 
care if you marry him for money, but why can't you come clean and admit it? It's not like that! Oh, so what is it like tying yourself to a bloody cripple at your age? That bloody cripple looked after us! If it hadn't been for him, we wouldn't have a home! We wouldn't have anything! Yeah, well, he's getting his pound of flesh now, isn't he? He's not buying me, Michael. Oh, so what is he doing then? Renting it by the hour? All right, then, don't come to our wedding. Henry and I are better off without you. I won't bother buying a present, then! Do you want to follow us, sir? No, Troy. I think I'd like to take a closer look in here. What? You mean going without a warrant? Isn't that a bit, uh... No problem, Troy? No, no. Just glad I didn't suggest it. If anyone finds us, you did. His room. Oof. What a way to live, eh? Must be hers. Getting ready to move out? Ah, the nanny's room. Maybe. No, maybe about it, Troy. Mary Sharp was her name, wasn't it? Oh, yes. I'd be interested to know exactly what Michael Lacy paints in there. Come on. I could force it, sir. You've broken enough rules for one day, Troy, but thank you all the same. ago. What's all this? Notebooks. <laughs> Iris Rainbird took neighbourhood watch to unheard of extremes. You wouldn't think, would you, one small village could have so much trouble bubbling away under the surface. Was it very horrid? The bodies? I've seen worse. I think you don't really bothered me, Connie. I didn't feel anything, not for Iris, Rainbird, or a son. Well, they weren't very nice people. Well, no people. All I could think about was, it's another death. Gets the machinery moving again. More clues, more statements. But I'm one step further down the road. I haven't gone through your lines with you. Oh. How's it going? Oh, well, four acts down, one to go. Yes, well, I suppose it's the last act that really matters. Yeah. 
Catherine, we can't. Henry, we don't have any choice. Not now. It's out of the question. Ah, Barnaby. Mr. Trace. I'm glad you're here. Voice of sanity. Catherine wants to cancel the wedding. I don't know what to say to her. 200 people coming, caterers, presents. Everything is organised. First Miss Simpson, now the Rainbirds. How can we have a wedding? How can we even think of it? Have you found anyone, Mr. Barnaby? Are you going to make an arrest? I'm afraid I'm here to ask you some questions, Miss Lacey. About the Rainbirds. Catherine? Well, that's ridiculous. You went to their house yesterday. After the funeral. Yes. What? You never told me. I didn't want to talk about it. Come into the house, I'll show you. Henry was asleep, so I went for a walk in the woods. I got these. Mushrooms? Yes. I saw Iris last week at the parish council meeting. She gave me a recipe. I said next time I went mushroom picking, I'd save her a few. So you took them round to her house? I got that. I think it must have been about half past four. I rang at the doorbell, but there was no answer. I thought it was strange because she was always in. It was only later I realised while I was outside, they must have been... Oh, God. Now do you understand, Henry? Everything's over. It's all slipping away. I don't suppose you saw anyone in the wood? No. You see anyone near the house? I think there was someone coming, but I didn't see them. Mrs. Quine. Look, everything's perfectly clear now. Can't you leave us alone? I'm afraid not, sir. We found certain notebooks at Mrs. Rainbird's house. I'm here to make an arrest. Phyllis Cadell, I'm arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Bella Trace on the 26th of June, 1995. Troy? You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Phyllis? No. It's all right, Henry. Yes. I did it. I'll get my coat. It was Bella who brought me to Thai House, you know, to help with Henry. He was in that wheelchair and she just couldn't cope. I did everything for him. And he was so grateful. And then I began to realise that if Bella wasn't there, if it was just the two of us, him and me. So you decided to kill her? Yes. I I'd learned how to handle a gun when I was quite young. It's something one does in the country. And then, that day, I said I was going to join them. On the shoot. I didn't really have a plan. It was all very confused. People shooting all over the place. I took a hip flask filled with vodka. And I kept on drinking. It was the only way that I could get the courage. Dead birds. The noise, the blood, made me feel sick and dizzy. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. And Bella was always so close to me. Or else there was someone between her and me. And then she walked away. She was talking to one of the beaters. It all happened 
so quickly. I, no one saw me. I doubled back behind the trees and managed to hide. And then I waited until I had a clear shot. And then... I shot her. It was terrible. I saw her pitch forward and fall to the ground. And then I just panicked. I got up and I ran and I ran. So you went back to Thai House? I went to my room and locked myself in. I was shaking. And then, a short while later, I heard Michael Lacey come to the house. And I went downstairs. Ben has been shot. We have to call an ambulance. I thought then that I'd done it. That I'd got away with it. How could I know I'd have been seen? Mrs. Rainbird. She put it all in those notebooks, did she? Oh, yes. PC, £5,000. PC, £5,000. PC, £2,000. When did it start? A week after the funeral. They suddenly invited me. I had to go to that revolting house. Poor Bella. <laughs> oh, I expect you'll be needed more than ever at Thai House now, my dear. Quite the Chatelaine you'll be, won't you? <laughs> Denny with the tea. <laughs> now, what will you have? The diamonds are marmite, the spades are jam, the hearts are tuna, and the clubs are sandwich spread. I don't know how they'd got the gun. They must have stolen it from my room. But they didn't even mention it. They just sat there, looking at me. Smiling. It was horrible. How much did they take? Everything. Fifty thousand pounds my mother had left me. Then Henry gave me some of Bella's jewellery. It's all gone. They'd even stopped asking me, they knew they'd cleared me out. Uh, sir, there's someone here for you in reception. Try. Did you kill her? Mrs. Rainbird and her son? Of course she didn't do it, Troy. You don't give someone all your money and then decide to kill him, do you? Well, she killed once. Yes, but there's something about that story. The shooting party. Still not right. Oh, Mr. Whiteley. Come in, Mr. Whiteley. Take a seat. Thank you. They, uh, they told me you wanted to see me. Yes, sit down. Something I wanted to ask you. You know you're featured in this. What is it? One of Mrs. Rainbird's notebooks. Five fifty p.m. Wednesday, D.W. Drives back from Mrs. L. Well, oh. 
It's a red star by it. Now, I believe that D.W. is you, David Whiteley. So who is Mrs. L? Uh, it's Barbara. Barbara Lesseter. Dr. Lesseter's wife. And you were with her when Emily Simpson was killed, is that right? Yes. We've been uh, seeing each other a while. So she wasn't shopping in Corston. Did Mrs. Rainbird try to blackmail you, sir? Oh, uh, no. No. But she, she did ring Barbara. If Dr. Lester found out, God knows what would have happened. She wanted 500 pounds. Did Mrs. Lester pay? Yeah. I told her not to. And don't give in to blackmailers. I, I warned her that it wouldn't end there. But it did, didn't it, Mr. Whiteley? Mrs. Rainbird was killed. And, and you think, you think that Barbara and me, you, no, no. It's not us you should be interested in, Chief Inspector. Why don't you talk to Michael Lacey? What about him? I was driving past Mrs. Rainbird's house yesterday at four o'clock, maybe a little later. I saw him there. You're sure it was Michael Lacey? Of course Lacey? it was him. He was standing at the door. He was wearing his denims and that, that cap he wears. I recognize him anywhere. Did you see him go in? Yeah. I was driving past and I, I, saw, I saw Dennis open the door. Just go and talk to him. Go and talk to Michael Lacey. You don't give up, do you? Mr. Lacey, we're here in connection with the death of Iris Rainbird. In connection with? You policemen have a wonderful way of expressing yourselves. As you may know, Mr. Lacey, she was murdered in a particularly brutal fashion. I hope you're not looking for insincere expressions of regret on my part, Chief Inspector. She was a very nasty woman. Did you ever go to her house? No. So what would you say if I told you that somebody had seen you entering her front door shortly after four o'clock yesterday afternoon? I would say they needed their eyes testing. Troy. Mr. Lacey, we have a warrant here to search these premises. What? You can't just... Oh, yes, we can. Start with the studio. You have no rights, Chief Inspector. This place is private. I will not have my work disturbed. Were you working here yesterday, sir? Yes. Yes, all day. Sir? How do you explain this, sir? I can't. Of course I can't. Where have you put the clothes? What clothes? The dungarees, the cap, the gloves. What? The clothes you wore to kill Iris Rainbird. You're raving mad. I never went near the place. This is a plant. You put that there. I know you. This is how you work, isn't it? Try! Far enough! Mr. 
Tracy, we are taking you into Corston. A further question. I'm not saying anything till I've seen a solicitor. Fine, Troy. You've got it all wrong, Chief Inspector. All wrong. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together Henry David Trace and Catherine Jane Lacey in holy matrimony. Just like poor Annabella. Which is an honourable estate, instituted of God himself, signifying unto us the mystical union that is betwixt Christ and his church. Which holy estate Christ adorned and beautified with his presence and first miracle as he wrought in Cana of Galilee. You are not worthy once to name his name without true worship, or indeed unless you kneel to have another name him. Or indeed, unless you kneel to have another name him. To have another name him. To have another name him. We are gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together Henry David Trace and Catherine Jane Lacey in holy matrimony. This is all we need, Troy, all we need. A custody death. Who found her? Duty officer. He's with her now, sir. I checked on her every hour, sir. She's not often enough! God's sake. Now get out of here. Maybe you should have put her on suicide watch, sir. Is that a reprimand, Troy? Because you're right. This is my fault. Maybe she's better off this way, all things considered. That is not the point. Lacey's been shouting his mouth off, sir. He wants to speak to you. Have you to look in, Chief Inspector? You know, prison is a lot more comfortable than I ever thought. You say what you've got to say, Mr. Lacey, and get on with it. I want to go home. Oh, aren't you, Mr. Comedy? If you want the truth, Mr. Lacey, I've had you up to here. And if you want to know the truth, why don't you talk to Judith Lesseter? What? Well, you're in such a hurry to drag me off yesterday, you never asked me where I was. You said you were painting. Yes, but I wasn't alone. I was doing a portrait of Judith Lesseter, the doctor's girl. 
She was with me from mid-morning till about seven o'clock at night. Why didn't you tell me this at the time? Well, you and the Cape Crusader here never gave me a chance. So, can I go now? No, Mr. Lacey, you can't go now. You can go when I say you can. <sighs> Better be true. Yes, I was with him. He was doing my portrait. You never told me about this, Judith. Why should I tell you? He only did the first sketches, but they took all day. He said I had a wonderfully complicated face. He's a surrealist, is he? Think very carefully, Miss Lesseter. Mr Lacey was apparently seen in the village just after four. He wasn't in the village. He was at Holly Cottage with me. And since everyone's always picking on him, you might as well know he was there the night Emily Simpson died too. How do you know that? Because I went to see him. I spoke to him through the door. He wouldn't let me in because he was painting, but I heard his voice. You've been seeing quite a bit of him. Is there uh, something that I ought to know? What? Something like you and your Miss Whiplash? Or Barbara and all her boyfriends? No, Dad, no. There's nothing you need to know at all. And the thing about Judith is that he never quite got used to my remarriage. It hasn't been easy. That test match you told us about, Dr. Lester, last Wednesday, there was no test match. Ah. Oh. Yes, well, she's not exactly a Miss Whiplash, but there is a lady that I... Uh, you see, Barbara's a bit short rations in that department. And that's where I was. I've got her address, if you want. Thank you. I don't know how Judith came to know anything about it. It's, it's all rather... Uh, Yes, it is. Shocking. Thank you, Dr. Lesseter. God, what a family. Do you think the girl was telling us the truth, sir? Yes. In fact, I think she might have told us more than she meant to. I suppose that means we'll have to let him go, Michael Lacey. Not yet, Troy, not yet. We find the knife at the cottage. We arrest him, but he knows he didn't do the murder. And the knife was planted, so... Why did you run away? Did you see his face when you found that knife? Yes. He was shocked. Oh, shock, yeah. Then panic. He made a run for it. But when we put him in the car... You've got it all wrong, Chief Inspector. All wrong. He was relieved. Relieved? Why? Why did he run away? Unless there was something else, something here he didn't want us to find. Nothing. Exactly, Troy. But yesterday, there was something. A painting. He's very good. It's only Marks and Sparks, I'm afraid. You should have told me you were coming. Marks and Sparks is fine. You know who did it, don't you? I can always tell. Yes, I know who did it. Oh, you should be very pleased with yourself, Tom. I had to release Michael Lacey this afternoon. The Lesseter girl backed up his alibi. There's still one thing I don't understand. It had to be trick. But I don't know how... Well, that's Troy. I have to be off. Where are you going? I'm going to the seaside. Mm. To Brighton. Mm. Burnham Crescent. 
Up ahead on this road on the left. Right. Some people! Why can't you look in your mirror? Well, that's it. What? That's what was missing. The mirror. You've done it, Troy. That's the, it. The mirror? Yeah. That's how they knew. Mrs. Sharp? Come in. I've been expecting you. I was employed by Henry Trace to look after the two children. Their father worked on the estate, but he was killed in a motor accident, his wife with him. The Laces? Michael and Catherine's parents. I moved into Holly Cottage. I was with them, I suppose, for about nine years. Please, Mrs Sharp. They were never easy children, but of course, under the circumstances, one had to make allowances. Michael was 18 and Catherine was 17 when it started. The rows, they were always finding fault with each other. Every day was a slanging match. She'd scream at him and he'd fling himself out of the house. I don't know how much longer I could have stood it, I tell you. All the time, I had a feeling there was something wrong, something false about the arguments, as if they were put on for me. And then, one night I couldn't sleep. For nine years, I just couldn't. I told Mr. Trace that I wanted to retire and I moved down here. Did you ever speak to Emily Simpson after you left? She was my best friend when I was at Badger's Drift and we did right afterwards. But I, I never told her anything. Then, when I heard about her death, I... I wasn't to know. And anyway, how could I betray them? I loved them, you see. Whatever they'd done, I did love them. Oh. Michael and Catherine Lacey. Emily Simpson must have found them in the woods. That's what shocked her, Troy. First she found the helpline people and then... A number in Brighton, yes. Lucy Bellringer told me that Mary Sharp had moved to the south coast, so I put two and two together. I'll drive. But which one of them was it? I mean, Michael Lacey was at home, and Catherine Lacey had that dog. It was Catherine Lacey. All she had to do was to hand the dog over to her brother. Remember what Judith Lester said to us? She talked to Michael Lacey through the door. Why didn't he open the door? Because then she'd have seen the dog. And that would have spoiled the whole setup. Catherine Lacey. Catherine Lacey, yes. She set it up to look like an accident.
And if it hadn't have been for an observant neighbour and an unlocked tricycle, we'd never have been any the wiser. What about the rainbirds? That was them too. And they were clever, weren't they? Always working off one another. Whoever went to the house was wearing overalls and a cap, and they probably made sure they were seen, at least from behind. Oh. It's you. Catherine stabbed him, and then she put the knife and the blood-soaked overalls into the basket. The basket we saw at Thai House. Very big basket, Troy, for very few mushrooms. What Mrs. Quine saw was Catherine leaving, not arriving. But of course, that was what she was meant to see. So it was Catherine Lacey who put the knife in her brother's studio? Yes, because he'd set himself up with a perfect alibi, Judith Lester's portrait. You see, they made it look as if he was guilty. When he's the one person who couldn't have done it. Yeah, they were getting away with murder, those two. But then they'd had a lot of practice. Trace was just a freak chance. Wrong place, wrong time. But Phyllis Cadell confessed. Phyllis Cadell thought she had killed Bella Trace, but she was inexperienced. Nervous. She'd been drinking. Phyllis told us that Bella was talking to Michael Lacey. What she didn't realize was that he was already separating her from the group, setting her up to be shot. Not by Phyllis, but by Catherine. Everything was confused. Phyllis fired and missed. Probably by miles, if the truth were only known. But you saw Bella fall. Yes, but you remember what Henry Trace said? Bella had tripped over a route. That was all Phyllis saw. It was just the worst possible timing. When Phyllis Cadell turned and ran home, Bella was still alive. And a few minutes later, Michael Lacey took her aside again to give the real marksman a clear aim. You know, I always said there was something wrong. It was simply this. If Michael Lacey was a beater, what was he doing walking with Bella Trace? He should have been up ahead, scaring the birds. And that's why he ran all the way back to Thai House. Right. He wanted to delay the ambulance as long as possible. Of course, Catherine Lacey doubled back to the house as well. The two even played out a scene for Phyllis Cadell. Bella's been shot. We have to call an ambulance. Why do they want to kill Bella Trace? To clear the way for Catherine to marry Henry. For the money. And another thing. I wouldn't be surprised they started on him already. Slow poisoning or something. <sighs> Shooting, bludgeoning, stabbing, poisoning. Is there anything those two wouldn't do? Have 
seen her? Have you seen Catherine? What are you talking about? She's gone. What do you mean she's gone? What's happened? Well, I don't know. First Catherine was upstairs and then suddenly Michael was there and now they're both gone. Mary Sharp. Oh, a stupid woman. She told them. Told them what? What's going on? Holly Cottage? Yes. No. No. I think we're too late. I'm not sure you'll want to see this, Miss Bellringer. Where did you find it? Catherine Lacey had hidden it upstairs. When we arrested the brother, he managed to shout to her. I'd been framed, and he made this sign. It was a coded message. He was warning her to remove the picture. It had given the game away, wouldn't it? It's very powerful. It's brilliant, even in its own way. He had talent. And it's so twisted. I almost guessed it when we came here. The three bedrooms and only one bed slipped in. <laughs> they pulled the wool right over my eyes. When? At the time we came here, and they were arguing. They really did seem to hate each other, didn't they? And they couldn't have staged it for our benefit because they didn't know we were here. Except that they did. They saw us in the mirror. And they did put on a show. Poor Emily. And poor Annabella. Who was she? Don't suppose we'll ever know. Sleep in this. I wouldn't dream of it. Anyway, after what you've just been through, a study of incest should be right up your street. Comes this in sadness from you? Let some mischief befall me soon if I dissemble all. You are my brother, Giovanni. You, my sister Annabella, I know this. Annabella. <laughs> <laughs> 